This chip that you see in front of you is right now in bring up. And so it does exist. Number, it's there. It is there. Yep. We've got a number of lead customers that are uh, teed up to absorb this yep. technology, and we intend to open this up to an even, broad, even broader audience. Yep. Hello, IPXers. We are at CES 2025. We look for disruptive technology. We've already met Blue Mind at Electronica, but we're going to have another little chat because this is complicated, this stuff. We're talking about when you do AI digitally, everybody understands that. Everybody understands the platform that you use to do AI digitally. And then somebody comes along and says, let's do it in analog. And everybody goes, what? So yeah. we have to have keep having this conversation with you because it's really important and it might be the disruptive thing that you need in your system. So we're just going to go over this with your eyes again for no better reason than it's fun and he's got lots of interesting things to say. So. We're going to ask the typical question, which is what we always ask is, Niraj, if you didn't exist, how would design engineers and systems be solving the problem before anybody came along and said, we could do this in analog? Well, firstly, good to meet you again on a different continent this time. Great to be <laughs> here on the floor at CES. Um, simply put, Guy, there's, a, there's tons of applications on our radar today and many more that haven't even been imagined yet that are just not coming to fruition because you don't have the efficiency, both in energy efficiency, cost efficiency, and performance right. for deploying machine learning on these devices. Yeah. And, and this so what is you're a saying, bit what you're saying is yep. if you're looking to do AI digitally, yep. the reality is yep. it makes much more sense for all those reasons to consider yep. doing it your way. It, it does, but I will say it's, it may not hold true for every application, okay? So there are digital solutions deployed in the world today. All, all machine learning is done di on digital chips today. Yes. There's a lot of it out there where energy is not a concern, right? If you've got a, 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 a device so, that's plugged into the wall outlet. So let's just make that clear. Yes. Energy. Yes. Energy. Yes. What's the next thing? Uh, performance. 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 Latency is a big problem, right? If you're building a VR headset that needs to recognize your gestures and render them in a virtual world, latency and performance is very important. Yeah, so let's just get to that latency because yep. we've talked about this before. Yep. We're getting down in the reeds, we're getting yes. down, down in the detail. Yep. That digital latency comes from legacy, doesn't it? It comes it from, does. that's the way we do it. So Absolutely. everything's got to be, the whole system's got to be on Yes. in order for that to happen. So automatically, that creates a latency. If you look at uh, the, the traditional von Neumann architecture, it basically envisions a, a, a fixed, a limited number of compute elements, memory elements, that are then orchestrated by an instruction set that gets compiled down, right? So that's how these computers work today. You, you work with a very limited set of hardware resources that have to run through in a multiplex, time multiplex fashion, the entire neural network. Yep. And analog architecture is very different. It's yep. massively parallel, yep. where we can use every transistor to represent a neural network weight and run all those computations completely in parallel yep. at the same time. So everything that was legacy is pushed away because yep. it's just not there. Exactly. It's just not there. Yep. Okay, yep. right. So we've gone through, if you're doing AI, that's digital, yep. that's why that works, which is why you say everybody uses digital because everybody's using digital. So, now you do exist, yep. now you do exist, how does the design engineer come to you and then you explain to them, how is this going to work in my application? So, what's their starting point? You now right. exist, right. what is their starting point? Because they've got to go through, they've got to go through a big process of, uh, I'm gonna learn Japanese. Well, so here's the interesting thing. They don't have to do that, by the way, guys. So we have built our solution to minimize the, the investment folks have to make to actually understand our technology. We use a standard AI frameworks, PyTorch, TensorFlow. So there will be things that they are familiar with. They're already familiar with that. So from a data scientist perspective, there's no change, actually. They use the same tools that they know and love and all they do is they, they use our neural network models in those flows. They do their same training as they've so always done. So they shouldn't done. be afraid. They shouldn't they should be afraid. think this is Harry Potter dark arts. Exactly. It's not. It's a black box. Our chip is a black box, which 
once it's once you do the training in the cloud like you always do we have the the the, the mapper software that takes those trained neural networks weight, weights and allows them to program our chip so really it's not a massive uh, rejigging off the pipeline, the development pipeline that stays largely the same. Uh, and we've, per we've done this on purpose so that this chip is easy for people to adopt. Soon we will be having evaluation kits that yep. folks can access. When do you think you'll have those evaluations? So in the next couple of months. In the next this, couple of months. This chip that you see in front of you is right now in Bring Up. And so it does exist, number, it's there. It is there. Yep. We've got a number of lead customers that are uh, teed up to absorb this yep. technology, and we intend to open this up to an even, broad, even broader audience. Yep. So last question is always about evaluation. They've got to go through the process of, I'm going to get hold of one of those boards. So put their minds at rest. Mm -hmm. When they get what looks like, quite frankly, anybody else's evaluation board, yep. what's going to happen when they plug it in? So uh, we will have a evaluation kit package, including the software layers that, that, yep. that will enable them to use this kit seamlessly out right. of box. So that's going to make us feel comfortable so, immediately. Exactly. And, and the key thing I think uh, users want to validate is, do I lose performance? Do I lose accuracy? Right, using this this new analog yep. architecture. Yeah, can it really do it? Can it really do it? Can it deliver me the same level of performance and accuracy that a digital chip that I'm using today can? Right. Yep. And that's what we intend to prove with this with yep. the evaluation kits, with 100x lower energy consumption. That's the question right. I was going to ask you. So that's the big thing. If that's the key element, because there's yep. not all that legacy yep. sitting in the system by its very nature. It's not using all that, so it's going to use low, much lower power. How quickly is the integration so they can actually see that in action? What's going to be their return on that high calorific investment in just getting the board and plugging it in? How long is that going to take them? Well, it's, that, that really depends on what is the product that they're interested in integrating into. If it's a consumer product, the design cycles can be pretty aggressive. Yep. So they may, you know, we of course provide all the collateral needed to quickly integrate our chip from a hardware and software perspective. So that could be a matter of months, right? It could be a matter of months. Uh, some longer term industrial applications and industrial sensor type of applications may take longer than that. So it's really very application and use case dependent. But we intend to be ready to enable this as quickly as possible. Right? Right. We want to move at the pace that our customers want to move at. Right, okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so this has been a follow-up to, to, to the interview that we did at Electronica where we talked more about the whole concept of analog AI. Now we've gone more, much more into the detail of the, of, of the product and the environment and what happens if you decide, you know, this is happening. This is happening, there are, Boomind isn't the only company doing this, but it is, this is happening. Yep. And at some point, somebody's going to be brave and somebody's going to go, okay, I keep listening, I keep hearing, I keep hearing the benefits. Yep. And at some point in the next two months, if you're, if, you're the, if you're the disruptor in this community and you're already doing digital AI and you think, maybe I save all that power if I go to Blue Mind, there's going to be a board, which we will do an update. The moment there is a board, we'll do an update and then we'll show you the board. Great. Great to see you again. Yeah. Thank you.